Hi Floss Tube. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt, NBC Stitcher, and um, which is also my handle on Instagram if you want to follow me there. This is episode number six. Uh, today is Sunday, June uh, 14th, 2020, and um, it's been three weeks since my last Floss Tube. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody that has been commenting and liking and uh, subscribing. Um, I really appreciate it. I Before I started the video, I saw that I'm like three people away from 400, which is just crazy because, I mean, that's a whole lot of people that are watching and subscribing and uh, I just appreciate all of that. So thank you so much. Um, and uh, it's been three weeks, as I said, from my last video. Uh, the reason for that is a couple things. First of all, I, um, with my work, I think the every other week schedule is going to work better for me. But which of those weekends, um, this weekend and then two weeks from now, is going to be the better of the two, like, off weekends, um, every other weekend situation that should work for me. So um, I went ahead and waited out till this one. Now, I did this last weekend I did film a video um, but I didn't end up putting it on um, I didn't upload it or do anything with it um, I just wasn't super happy with it um, part of it is I was trying to figure out how I wanted to address everything going on and to talk about stuff but I don't want to sound preachy or speaking about something that is not something that I, I don't want to put my mouth somewhere that uh, I want to show support, but I don't really want to do something where I'm trying to take over or do any, or, you know, tell people what to do. So, um, I just want to say briefly that I support Black Lives Matter, I support the protests, um, I support the need for change in our country for to end systemic racism, uh, to take actions to correct that. Um, this is not a political opinion of mine, this is a human rights opinion and civil rights opinion. I am a gay man, it's not something that I have no experience with but as a white gay man I don't have the same kind of experience that many other people do or people of color and I'm not trying to say that I do um, but I know that um, we in this country are asking and demanding for things to change and I think we are seeing some of that and I'm very happy about that I want to see more of it and I think um, you know this is pride month and the best thing that I think to honor that is to show support and to do take actions to support our fellow um, people that are asking for change and to fight for rights um, as a gay person I would not have the rights that I do if it wasn't for uh, people of color and their fight for civil rights and also queer people of color and their fight for our rights. Um, the Stonewall riots happened in a large part because of black trans people and it's not something that, you know, we can't just take the benefits of what we got and, turn, and forget our brothers and sisters and so uh, I don't want to do that. So. Um, but I don't really want to spend the video going into all sorts of things. Um, I've kind of thought about maybe doing a separate video that's not a floss tube but still uploading it here um, and kind of talk about some of the stuff that uh, my feelings on stuff. Uh, not from being, well, from being a, a gay person, being an attorney, um, I don't practice criminal law, but it is something that I. Having gone to law school and seen things, it, it, nothing like what's happening now is surprising, um, unfortunately. Um, and so I think, you know, 
fighting for change and all uh, of that is it's time and um, I think we can really do a lot to see that happen now um, and yeah so I think that's pretty much it um, if that is a problem or you don't like that you don't have to watch my videos um, you don't have to comment you don't have to do anything um, so do that um, if you have I don't really want to get into um, I mean well if you have anything constructive or anything you want to comment about I have no problem uh, responding to comments or anything like that if that's something that you would be interested in um, but I was really moved, um, especially last weekend when I watched uh, Julie, Kansas City Girl in Colorado World, talking about how, uh, talking about this on her channel, and really lots of other floss tubers that have done it since then. Um, I think it is important, uh, but it was also, um, I said I filmed another video. Part of the reason why I didn't ever upload it was I wasn't, I was still working through everything and I still am, but I wasn't really in a good place when I was actually talking about my cross stitch. I don't feel like I was, it wasn't a good time. I wasn't like enjoying that. And so it was kind of hard to do that without having gotten through everything else. So that's where we are. Um, and at six and a half minutes, it's probably the shortest time that I've spent explaining that in the multiple versions of this that I have done. And so we're gonna go with this one. Hopefully, if you're seeing it, this is the one that stuck. Um, but anyway, okay, so what's going on? Um, what am I watching or listening to? Okay, so I've got a couple things that I wanna talk about, just beginning of just what I've been watching, what I'm enjoying. Um, and I, uh, this Friday was the second episode of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 5, which is great, hilarious, um, really good show. Um, I enjoy, I've been watching RuPaul's Drag Race since Season 2, or Season 3, definitely. Um, I know I, see, I saw parts of Season 2, and I've seen parts of Season 1, um, but that's like every it's something I watch every week um, it's just something that is one of the great things that I and I don't have cable so I, I order it on Amazon and watch it the next day and don't really pay attention to social media Friday nights because I don't want to know who went home or anything about all of that um, but it's just um, if anybody watches um, Drag Race uh, and all stars, I think this season the way they've changed up the who's sending people home situation is really crazy and cool. Like it's it's a new um, it's interesting. I think it's really going to change it the game, uh, and you're going to see different things. So um, I've enjoyed it so far. Um, I'm not going to say anything, any spoilers or anything, in case you are watching it and you haven't watched Friday's episode. Um, but one of the queens that I liked and was hoping to go further ended up going home Friday, um, which is sad, uh, but she, um, but yeah, so um, there's that. Um, otherwise, um, I have been doing a, um, I've been re-reading slash listening to a series of books that I have gone through a couple times. Um, it's called The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. Uh, it's an urban fantasy series that is set in Chicago. Uh, and the main character, Harry Dresden, is a wizard slash private investigator slash kind of, I mean, he gets into all sorts of stuff. But um, it's, so it's basically like our world, but there's a magical element that most people don't know about. And so that's like the, like, urban fantasy um, genre, I guess, uh, which I really like the series. It's one of my favorites. Uh, but the reason why I'm going through it again is that 
the next book is coming out next month and then the book after that he wrote two of them or really he wrote one big one and then they split it up into two and he and he fixed it and ended up writing it as two um but the next two books are coming out starting first one is january no july 15th and then two months later in um august no september um so which is peace talks and battlegrounds um or battleground so i'm really excited for that so i've started rereading the series um i'm in the third book now um i don't think i'll get through all i think there's 15 currently or maybe peace talks is number 15 um i don't think i'm going to get through all of them before peace talks comes out because that's only like four weeks away and that's a lot um but yeah so i've that's the series that i've been um into recently and i've really been doing that over watching more s stuff or um news shows on netflix or things um i did watch the new season of queer eye on netflix uh, i finished that this week which was really good so if you like um queer eye uh there is the a new season set in philadelphia that is out um it's been out for a couple weeks now but um yeah, so, okay, so this is a channel about cross-stitch, and now we actually talk about the cross-stitch. Uh, so, first up, um, finishes. I have no, like, complete big finish of anything um, since the last time I haven't done anything, but I do have some individual finishes within some of my, one of my new pro my big project so this is the uh pain-free crafts sal uh fantasy alphabet um each letter is a different fantasy or mythical creature and it's shaped in that letter and then you go through and so a is for anubis b is for basilisk which i think i don't think that i had this completely done last time so b for basilisk is done and then i've done c for cerberus and finish back stitching everything. I don't think I put a picture of him up on Instagram and then I didn't take a picture after I finished it and because I put it in the video that nobody will see and then moved the Q-snap and then didn't move it back. Um, but, and then now I've got D is for dragon, um, which is done. I finished it yesterday, finished all the back stitching um no wait yeah yeah i finished it yesterday morning um i didn't finish the back stitching yet yesterday uh and then i've gotten a start on infield um e-n-f-i-e-l-d it's i get the the pattern comes with a little explanation of the creature and um or the fanta fantasy um mythical creature or whatever and so these are it's like a part fox, part eagle creature that has, it looks like a fox, but it's basically got eagle talons on its front paws. Um, so it's seen in some heraldry and some other uh, medieval sources, uh, but it's not like a major, like, there aren't a whole lot of stories about them, I guess, or anything like that. Um, but I'm moving along on this. Um, and I've been making progress on the border as I worked across. And this is going to be a repeat of this. So I did a little bit, but I wanted to go ahead and move on. Um, so I came back over here and I filled in more of around here and I got to fill in this part and then work my way down. But um, I'm working on, I'm using an 11 by 11 Q-snap is kind of the what it's my favorite but it's also on this project i've tried using a bigger one and i just i don't like it um so that's what i've been using and as i'm working on this i can still continue to work on i i put it pretty much like this and so i can continue to work on the border at times um fill, fill this in and then this way um but but once i move over this is these are the eyes of the F, which is for fawn. Um, once I move over here, it's going to take long. Uh, I won't be able to do the border, but um, 
Yeah, so that one will be a little bit, hopefully I'll just power through that and then when I get over here to EFG Griffin um, and then H is for hippocampus, which is, or hippocampi, I don't know, hippocampus is a part of the brain, maybe I read that wrong. Anyway, it's a like water horse type thing, um, I think. Um, and so it's over here. I have heard from other people doing this that that one takes a while. And it looks like it takes a while because there's a lot of color changes. Um, and so that one may take a while. My goal that I've been doing is one a week. Um, this is basically what I've been mostly focusing on. Um, I It took me most of the week to do Dragon. Um, and I did, I did one other thing in the last week. Um, but... I think part of that, well, I worked on two other projects, um, but part of that is my like time at night stitching was, I didn't use every night, I didn't stitch every night. So, um, or I didn't have a whole lot of time every night to do it. So that could be part of it. Um, but I mean, I did this mostly yesterday. Part of the head was already done, um, the black and then the like darker red. Um, was done and then I did this whole part and then this all this tail down here um, so I don't know um, I still am gonna keep on trying to get I, I think if I get this done pretty quickly this week and get to do some other projects then I will keep on with that goal um, I may add an extra week for H because it's so complicated um, and so that may, we'll see. I don't know. I'm a way off from there. Um, but if I do one a week, I will catch back up before the end of the year. Um, I think I would, if I do one a week, not taking an extra week for H, I would catch up at T. Um, so there's still quite a bit. And then I'd have two weeks from that. But that's a lot. And I don't necessarily, I don't know. We'll see. I put in my post, you know, monog I, I left that monogamous stitching a, a while ago. Um, I don't, I still like this and I still want to keep doing it. Um, but if it becomes where it's going to take a lot, it's, I'm not going to want to stick with it, I don't think. Um, but maybe I can continue to encourage myself by counting each of these as finishes versus just oh, I, I finished, uh, or I, I'm done with that letter and move it along. So um, I am doing that. So I have two finishes this month. I have Cerberus and Dragon um, already. So that's what I'm doing there. Um, and, oh, and this is, is the called for DMC, which there's quite a bit of it. Um, and it's on 32 count white Lugana, no, Joe Blend, um, which I got at Fire Poppies. And I'm definitely gonna have extra. So I am good with that. But I got a half yard, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a quarter. So there's that. Um, alrighty. Okay, so the next project, now we're in whips, which, well, you also saw a part of that one, which is a whip. Um, oh, I did get my hair done. I just realized that I got my hair cut, uh, since the last video. Well, I, I got it done Friday, so, um, I was so ready for that. Um, I usually keep it pretty short. Um, I don't think I had, I had started filming partway into quarantine, so this is kind of, like, my normal haircut that I normally get and then it's a little bit longer on top but I like it um, from what we what it grew out over uh, stay at home and quarantine um, the beard is new overall as well and so I'm still playing around with that and figuring out what I want to do with it but I really like I'm so glad to be back to short because it just I, I don't like it that long um, I feel like anytime I try, I went outside or I did anything that it would get it get really sweaty and I just like I got I don't like this. It's much easier with shorter hair. Um, so 
I appreciate it. I feel, I, it's still not, it still wasn't anything the length of what most women have their hair, and so I feel for you. Um, I don't really know what all you go through for that, but, oh, I couldn't do it. Um, so, okay. Now back to the cross stitch. Uh, this is Hello Pumpkin. This is by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Um, I made quite a bit of progress on this. Um, I finished up the, uh, the porcupine that took forever, or hedgehog, not porcupine, hedgehog that took forever because his whole back is pretty much confetti. Um, and yeah, so he, that took a while and I did finished up all the top stuff um, and then I'm pretty much working down here to the side and then working on this. Um, so this is on 18 count Ada by Be Stitch Me in Nova which should was the color fabric of the month maybe February? I think so. Um, so yeah, from this year, uh, which is like a blue and purple teal kind of mix. Um, I really like it. It was it's nice. Um, I did have to. I am I back stitched around the light blue stuff that's on the outside um, just because it kind of disappears um, unless I do that. Um, but yeah, it's been coming along. I'm using all the called for DMC. Um, I haven't really changed it, but. Yeah, so it'll, this is the base, and then there's some grass, uh, another two pumpkins, and, an, and another mushroom down here. Um, so the way I've been working on this has been a couple strands at a time, uh, or a couple lengths at a time, two to three lengths, uh, and I try to finish one little leaf or one something or kind of get progress on stuff. Uh, to kind of push myself forward. Um, but now that I finished the top here, that was my goal for June. So I have put this away and probably won't pick it up till the end of June. Um, and then I hope to finish this and the tree and everything in July. Um, I may pick it up probably just to like get some more in this tree because that's going to take a while. And if I'm just doing the tree, it's going to take forever. Um, but I can pick it up and just fill in and kind of work my way down and kind of get some more stuff ready to go. Um, but that's Hello Pumpkin by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Uh, it was a stitch along last year. Um, I didn't start it during the stitch along. I started it after everything, but people were still finishing it. I saw, well, Erin Two Martini Stitcher was doing it um, on hers. Um, kind of a similar trying to focus on it to get it finished. Uh, saw her doing that at the end of last year, or no, maybe this year, early this year. Um, and that was one of the reasons why I went and got it. Um, also, Julie, Kansas City girl in Colorado World, she did it. Um, and I think I want to finish mine sort of like hers. She did a pillow. Um, I don't know that I'll use yellow uh, just because my fabric choice is different. Um, and but I do think I want to do it as like a big pillow, um, like a big square pillow, um, put on the couch or something. So there's those two. All right. Okay. So well, I don't have the picture. Um, the new Mirabilia, which is Princess Eliana, um, I have started her, I started her for my birthday, um, and I got a little bit further since I think I showed her last time. So this is part of her giant dress, um, multi-colors, it uses all of the early numbers, the new um, DMC colors that are like 1 through 35, so all of them, and then more than that, um, and then lots of beads and lots of... Um, treasures and stuff. Um, I bought the pattern and the bead pack from Fire Poppies uh, when they were doing it as a pre-order. Um, so I ordered those. Um, this is 32 count Gaia Lugana by Be Stitch Me. Um, it, it's kind of, it's not the same color as Nova, um, 
it's also got green in it and it's a it's a lot more lighter but it's definitely got that like purpley color and some of the blue um, so you're kind of seeing some of that um, but I am doing this um, I haven't worked on it in the last couple of weeks but I did work on it since the last video so it was in my pile um, but yeah um, I so part of the reason why I'm kind of rethinking my one a week on my fantasy alphabet is that I really I started a whole bunch of Mirabilia's during and Nora Corbett's during Mania I really want to go back to work on them um, I like them I think they're great and I want to continue to work on them but I if I and so that's why I'm not sure this whole one a week type thing is gonna work um, but yeah I haven't really figured out a rotation or what I'm gonna do on that um, but yeah so there's that okay next one also mirabilia this one I did work on so this is deco spirits this is an older mirabilia um, they are full coverage uh, they don't have any beads on this one but there is I'm using petite tre uh, petite treasure braid and not the Krynik, um on it I'm doing the four panels individually versus one giant piece, and so I, um, yeah. Um, this is, oh, you saw the back. Um, yeah, I don't really care if people see my backs. Um, but yeah, this is the air piece, um, and I did some more on her arm, got that and some stuff down here. Started using some of the treasure braid uh, down here, this uh, sparkly light blue. Um, really enjoyed that. This is just a 32 count white Lugana. Um, and yeah, I think this is the base. Now the air will be down here, but it's just, there's a few stitches and some back stitching down there, but otherwise it's this. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying this. Uh, this is one of the, ones that I definitely want to get back to. Um, I want to work on all of those uh, all the time, I think. Um, but yeah. Oh, and this is a Wonder Woman pin, uh, or needle minder that I got from B Stitch Me when she did a giveaway on her floss tube. Um, and I, it, it was one that she got from Aaron the Blind Stitcher. So um, thank you both for that. I keep her on the Mirabilia. Uh, all right, so also since the last time I did a video was the 29th, which meant it was Long Dog Leap Day, Sal Day. Um, so I am doing Castles in the Air by Long Dog Samplers. Uh, this is a big monochromatic long dog or you do whatever colors you want I've seen a lot of people do it with like I think it's well the brandy fabric or no I think it's huntress is by picture this plus maybe I don't remember it's like a deep purple uh, not fuchsia but like a deep pink purple is really pretty and then they use like a white or natural silk um, which was really that's really pretty too so I am doing um, this is 32 count linen in toast also by be stitch me and the floss that I'm using is silk from silks for you in PR 075 which is this great blue um, blue is my favorite color and this is one of the best blues that I, I really like. Uh, so I did, I got these parts done. I did the 20. You can see I did not commit to another 20 um, or another two even. Um, I probably will get it done before then. But uh, this is, I did a center start. Most of the time I do. And this is uh, page five uh, that I've been working through. And I'm kind of like getting most of the cross stitch done and then going back through and doing some of the back stitch. So I did some of that in here, some of that um, throughout, and that's what I'm 
working on. Um, I probably, I'll try to work on this again before the 29th, but I'll definitely work on it on the 29th if I don't get to it before then. But um, I've got a couple of these monochromatic patterns going or near to it. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out how to balance all of those, I guess. Uh, but yeah. Okay, uh, and then the only other one that I have is a new start. So, because it's Pride Month, I am started. I started Blueprint for the Rainbow City by Ink Circles, which is a great um, pattern. I I'm really a big fan of Ink Circles and everything that Tracy does. Uh, but I am doing this, uh, with, I didn't do the called for, I did get the called for, whoops, rainbow, uh, thread works, um, which is number 1154, this is Bradley's Balloons, it's a nice rainbow color, um, I haven't started using it yet because I may change, but, the main color that I'm using is this blue. It's another Threadworks. Um, I didn't write it down, and I don't know where the thing is. Uh, but I'll put it in the drop-down box. Um, and, okay, so I'm doing this on 40 Count Verdal, which is an even weave, uh, also by Be Stitch Me. And so here's where I started. I started at the bottom here, and I'm kind of working my way up. Um, I think I've said this before, but the way I make my X's is I start at the top, and like if you've got four, uh, you know, on Ada or something, I start at the top right and go to the bottom left, and then I go top left to bottom right. Um, it's just the way I've done it, so it works for me because of the way I'm going in and out of the holes. It works best for me to go from the bottom and up, um, and to the left um, and so I started in the middle because of the bottom because that was easier to find uh, and then I'm working my way that way and then I'll work my way that way and up um, but yeah I've just been using the blue so far um, and that's two th two lengths uh, and I'm doing one strand over two and this is 40 count uh, this is Gaia as well uh, which is the same as the Princess Eliana, um, it's a little different on the Verdal, it's more muted, but um, yeah, you can see some of the color there. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much where I got to. Um, there is some rainbow to put in here, uh, and I'm gonna do that. Uh, I think I'm gonna wait and get more of the blue in before I figure out what I'm gonna do on the rainbow. Uh, my thought, I also have this Confetti by Weeks Dye Works um, that I'm not sure if I want to use this or the Bradley's Balloons um, or which. So I don't know. I'll, I'll kind of decide um, when I get closer to it. Uh, but it's not bad to have more rainbow. So that's where I am on that. Um, and this is the first time that I've used Threadworks um, since the blue is Threadworks. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I think I'll definitely get some more. Uh, I really like that color of blue as well. I may buy some more of that because it's a good, it has a good variation between some dark and some brighter blue um, that I really like. So, uh, next up is haul. So, because I work on that fantasy alphabet, it really seems like I just work on that. So, I don't know if I'm gonna keep on that. We'll see. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a little, not sure about it. Okay. Oh, and this is gay is okay uh, with the state of Oklahoma. This was a shirt my group in law school made. We were it was the LGBT group, um, but we this was one of our shirts that we made to sell to everybody else to to put on different things and do different events and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but it's what I 
designed it. I am proud of it. So I have a couple of them that I still wear, even though it's been a while since I was in law school or made these. Um, but okay, so the other thing that happened after my last video was like that day I got two packages in the mail, one from 123 Stitch and one from um, uh, Fire Pop, no, uh, more fabric. No, I guess it was Fire Poppies and 123 Stitch. So, um, which there is super fast, and but it also means I have a lot more haul to show this time versus a week ago. Uh, so, first of all, let's go with what I already, uh, what I had. Um, okay, fabric. Hear me talk about Brandy a lot, but I there's another fabric uh, company, Dyer Group, dudes that I like um, and this is Fortnite Fabrics and I'm in their fabric of the month and I get both they have two colorways they have a color and they have a neutral and I get both um, because I want to have some more um, I like their colors but I also like having something a little bit more neutral depending on the fabric or the pattern I, I I, I've been in the past I've said I'm not really that much of a neutral person and I still think that that's true in the sense of like it's generally not my like go-to but some patterns like I don't want to put a color that on a color or and I don't really want to do white so then there's neutrals that I do like so um, which I am really happy that I started getting their neutral so this is um, oh that is Amaryllis, and this is in a 32 count even weave. It's a quarter, it's a quarter yard. So, um, yeah, it's really pretty pink. Um, it is like the third pink that they've had so far. And I think this month they're doing a yellow tea rose and their comment was, cause we have done enough pink. Um, so I appreciate that. Uh, cause I think that although I am using one of them in an upcoming project, I, do agree that's like that's a lot of pink and I'm not sure what all I'm gonna stitch that has that many pinks um but I'll find something because um I'm just accumulating all this fabric but I think that's the kind of that's one of the cross stitchers that I am uh that I'm a a fabric hoarder um if you follow or you watch uh, Autumn Lane Stitchery uh they are a designer and floss tuber um, but it's uh, husband and wife team, Aaron and Cassie, Cassandra, and she is, I'm, I think I'm like her. I'm like fabric. I, I buy fabric and I keep it and then I'm like, oh, that's another one. Oh, I like that. And I, um, but when I look back, I'm like, that's a lot of different blues. I have a lot of those, um, but I don't care. Uh, so I'm going to use it sometime. Anyway, this is the neutral that they did last month. This is Morel. Um, it's a great, it's kind of like a, oh, it's like a tan olive color is kind of the, it's a little more green, olive green, I think, but it's really pretty. Um, and this is also on a 32 count even weave. That's my like, seems to be my go to. Um, I do stitch on everything. I stitch on Ada. I stitch on some linen, um, but even weave is my preferred, um, now, I, although sometimes the Ada, I like the Ada too. It, it really depends on, I think the color that I want. Um, cause you can't get the same kind of color and even weave that you can get in Ada and linen's different as well. Sometimes I'll use linen for the color effect. Um, and especially like if I'm doing something with fractional stitches, I really prefer to have an even weave because it's just much easier to make that for me um, than trying to pierce Ada or, and with linen, the main thing that I don't like about it is just the uneven, um, you know, threads. There's a really thick one and then a little one and it just, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, but okay, so that's that. I'm, I'm, they haven't shipped um, their 
fabric of the month for this month, but I'm excited because one of the color is a yellow tea rose, which looks really good. So I'm excited about that. Also, they did release a permanent uh, color line that uh, called Boho Desert. Yeah, uh, there's it's for this summer, um, of, and you can buy <coughs> the full line. You can buy individual pieces. You can do um, lots of different things. But they. I think it's hmm, six or eight colors uh, and they did a Memorial Day flash sale where they had everything on their website 20% off so I bought a bunch of stuff um, including a big half yard of one of their neutrals and one of their blues um, that was just a quarter um, but they it the neutral I think is going to uh, I wanted it because I think I want to use it for uh, and a forest grew um, which is giant and it's going to take a lot of fabric and so I think that'll work um, if not I think I mean I can use it for lots of other stuff too but um, it takes a while because they have to dye it and then you know do everything and so that I'm not I haven't got it yet but I'm not surprised no, nor am I like Oh my god it's just I completely understand that it takes time um, also this is um, Fortnite fabrics is married with stitches uh, is their floss tube and they are hilarious and great um, also if you watch their most recent one you'll know that they are moving and have a new place and so I'm sure lots of stuff is happening and um, you know but they're I got plenty of stuff to stitch so I'm not in any rush to get it um, or anything that I I'm like, everybody that uh, I tend to like buy stuff from, the most part I'm like, oh, I'm not, I'm not one where I'm like, oh, I want to start that right now. Well, I do want to start stuff right away, but um, most of the time I don't get to the point where I'm ready to start until I have the fabric, because then I'm like, yes, this is it, and then get the floss, make sure it's right, and then go to that phase. So if... Um, but I do like planning out like okay I need these things um, but now I've got all this stuff started and I have everything else as well okay next fabric uh, May 22nd was my birthday it's also a fighting night fright fight night um, for Brandy be stitch me in her Facebook group which she puts up a bunch of fabrics um, and you me please and then she does a bunch of giveaways and she does all this stuff anyway it was my birthday so I decided oh yeah and she start, she put out this she teased the color as well but this is one of her new colors that she came up with um, and it's gorgeous this is autumn and it's this beautiful green red and tan and just looks like beautiful autumn leaves and the change of the season um, I, this is an 18 count Ada, I just, is beautiful, I love it, um, I had to get it because I knew there's going to be something that I'm going to want to stitch on it, um, I saw, this is the same color that Erin, to Martini Stitcher, was talking, she got, and she's doing, um, is it, uh, Autumn Sky, or Touch the, Reach for the Autumn Sky, or Touch the Autumn Sky, which is a out of print Mirabilia that um, is beautiful. Um, so yeah, I also got it in 40 count Verdal, because you know, I need more of this. Um, I did just buy some more. I asked Brandy to, to do some um, for some projects that I want to do and so I am stocking up on 40 count. Uh, seems like lots of people are getting into this whole thing. Now I'm not a 40 count. I haven't done, I haven't bought any 40 count linen because, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of the different size of stuff. And but I haven't really looked, so I don't know. Maybe it's that's not as bad of a problem when you get into a higher count. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, maybe you all know. Uh, anyway, um, the other thing I bought was a piece of. The other color, one of the other colors she put out, um, this is Frost, and this is a 32 count 
Joe Blinn. Great, great light blue, just a little bit of modeling. Um, this is really pretty. So I have a plan for this as well. Um, so I'll talk about that in a little bit, but the thing I do like, especially with her Joe Blends, her quarter, a fat quarter cut is pretty big. It's like 18 by 34. And so you're gonna, you can definitely fit a lot of stuff on it. Um, if you're doing a Mirabilia or a Nora Corbett, I mean, you can fit, I mean, you might be able to fit three of the flower uh, pixies or different, you know, you could fit quite a bit of stuff on this. Um, so yeah, some of the bigger Mirabilia's maybe not, uh, but you know, some of the bigger flowers, maybe not. Uh, some of the orchid parties are kind of bigger, um, but anyway. So that's the fabric that I got. And then I bought stuff from Fire Poppies. I ordered some floss. I ordered some DMC, but I didn't keep it out. I just, and some of this may be mixed up. I don't remember who. I got some of this from, well, let's start with this. Okay, so we've got, these are two weeks dye works. Um, this is Aqua and Sky. These are like a pretty blues, light green, this Aqua. So I bought these. I'm not sure what I'm going to use, but I am doing, this is the, um, I also bought this. This is the Elemental Dragon's Water. This is Ink Circles, um, another mandala. Um, dragon mandala. I've done the, I started the dragon, uh, earth, and I'm doing, I did it on, doing it on 40 count for a doll, and the, um, floss that I'm using is foliage by Weeks Dye Works, which is this great green to brown variegated floss that I think is really kind of capturing the whole earth element. Um, so my idea is to do, because there's going to be four, I think, at least four, um, of the elemental dragons. This is water. Air may be out, but I know, I've seen the picture of it, because I joined um, Patreon uh, and patron Tracy Horner, who's Ink Circles, um, and she will put out like preview pictures before even the shops have it of some of her new stuff. Um, depending on your level of how much you support her. Um, and you can also, I think at the higher end, you can get a PDF download of it um, versus her new stuff. So um, yeah, so that may be worth it. Um, but this is water, this is the and she mentioned when she revealed the air one, um, she was saying that the between the air and water, she did those kind of in tandem because she wanted to make sure that they were different enough that the air was not the same as water and vice versa. So, um, but my thought is to do this one on a light blue, lighter blue, and then have a darker thread. Um, and then the air one I wanted to do on a darker blue with a lighter thread. Uh, so, because um, I think like the air dragon would be more lighter because the air is lighter versus it's kind of like I could in dark night, but, or uh, dark night, dark, you know, like, um, like a night sky or something like that, darker kind of, um, look and then like the air would be lighter but that's my thought um what I want to do with it um but I'm doing I want to do all of them on 40 count um and then figure out how to put them all together or something later but um yeah so this is water uh dragons elemental dragons water so I'm gonna I've got this one I don't know that I'll start it soon um well I don't have the fabric yet um but I did buy some it's, I'm waiting for it to come 
that was what I was, um, Brandy, and I was messaging her about it, and she dyed some for me, and I picked a couple ones that I liked, um, and then she's, I think the other ones are going to end up in the next Friday night, fight night, um, so yeah, so this is, oh, there's another one that I bought, um, this is Topaz by Weeks Dye Works. Um, so I'm trying to figure out, I bought some blues just to see what I would want to use. Um, of course it's going to depend on the fabric, so I can't really make a decision, but that's where I got those and then I'll figure it out. Uh, I probably will also take it into my LNS and look at colors there just so I can find something that I want to do. Um, but I'll take both of them in, I think. Um, alrighty. Okay. So the other thing that I got, um, I got one, this one I got from Fire Poppies, and then I bought some, well, I don't remember. Some of these are mixed. Anyway, um, I, I was watching Erin to Martini Stitcher yesterday, which was her video from Monday, I think, um, and she was saying that she is at the phase where she's just seems to be getting uh, collecting all of these mirabilias. Um, and she was like, I haven't start, started any, but I just, I'm at the phase of cross stitch where I just keep getting these. And I, that totally hit me because I'm like, I am also buying all of these mirabilias or Nora Corbett patterns because I'm like, well, I want it. I don't want it to go out of print or to not be able to get it if I do want to do it later. Um, and, oh, well, I come up with this idea. Why don't I do like those three together or on the same kind, kind of fabric? And, you know, so along those lines, I bought uh, Miss Christmas Eve, which is a Nora Corbett Mirabilia. Um, and I bought a beautiful light blue um, opalescent on um, last week's Friday Night Fight Night from Brandy that I think I'm going to do her on. I mean, it's totally not what this fabric is, obviously, and but on Fabric Viewer, um, you can put in some fabrics, and some of the Be Stitch Me fabrics are on there now, and I used one, it was the April Showers one, which is from couple months ago and it just looked great and I liked the idea of the opal so we'll see um, the other thing that I'm thinking of is that this frost maybe not this piece but there's two holly um, pixies that I think would go well with Miss Christmas Eve there's like just regular holly and then there's like inkberry holly and I think doing those on this would be really pretty to go with that. Um, we'll see. Who knows? Um, that's my, I guess my mantra is we'll see. Um, and then I bought Cathedral Woods Goddess, which is another one that I've been seeing. I've seen it a lot, and I'm really, I really would like to do it. Brandy at Be Stitch Me is doing this currently, um, and so. It's one I think would be really pretty, um, and I, I have no idea on fabric or anything yet, um, but that's definitely one of those. Um, okay, before I get to those, um, and then I bought a couple more Nora Corbett's, the Pixies. I, I'm not, not all of the Pixies are ones that I would want to do, but I'm definitely picking up more that I would like to do maybe in the future. This is Poppy, which is really pretty, um, and somebody I was talking to or commenting about on Instagram, or maybe it was here, um, was saying she's doing Poppy, she's going to redo Poppy with, a, but a blue conversion. And I was like, that would be great. I mean, I like red poppies, but blue's my favorite color, so that might be really pretty too. So, anyway, that's that one. And then, this is Sweet Pea, another one that is a, uh, pixie that I like. So, there's that. Okay, the next two, this kind of relates to the um, Dresden series that I was talking about, the book series. 
So I saw somebody that did the um, Raven Queen and turned it into Maleficent. Um, and I thought, oh, that's really cool. I bet that took, like, that's, that's probably really challenging or really something that took a lot of, um, you know, effort or whatever. Um, it's really impressive. So, like, that's really, that's really cool. Um, but it inspired me that uh, I saw, I've been looking around for kind of some different patterns that maybe I would want to, to stitch. Um, in the, the Dresden series, there is uh, one of the, there's a lot of different types of characters and different players and everything, and he's kind of in this whole world of different stuff. Anyway, fairies are real, and there's, their concept of fairies is there's two, well, there's actually six fairy queens, but there's two sides. There's summer and winter, and they both have their purpose but they are eternally struggling with each other for, um, you know, to make themselves better. Uh, but they're the, there's like two old queens that, the queens that were, um, and they are somewhat important uh, for particular books, but the main queens that he deals with, the main one that he deals with is the Winter Queen, um, who's Queen Mab, and as in from Shakespeare. And she, uh, she is always depicted with uh, white hair, very um, beautiful, powerful, scary. Um, and she has this interesting relationship with Harry throughout the books. Um, and so I have wanted to try to figure out something where I could like take something to adapt into her because finding a cross-stitch pattern of a character from a book series is not always the easiest, um, unless you're Harry Potter. Uh, but, so I saw the Winter Queen from Mirabilia, and I thought that might be something that I could do, but change the hair color, um, change her around a little bit. This is still, who knows, um, but, Queen Mab has an opponent, which is Queen Titania. Um, and I know there is a Titania uh, pattern by Mirabilia, um, but I don't, it's not the way Titania is pictured in the series or described in the series. So I would, so I thought it would be more interesting to do it with the Summer Queen um, and the Winter Queen, but just adapt them into fairies, I guess this way they're looking at each other. Um, and so changing around their hair colors and trying to figure out some other stuff. Uh, but these are beautiful. I do know that this one has Whisper, which is going to be a butt to do. Um, because that's what everybody says. Um, but this is way off in the future. I have no idea when I would want to do this or anything. But I wanted to get the two of them in case that is something that I want to do in the future. Um, we all know that there's this whole the collecting aspect of this hobby um, and this craft and so that's part of it um, but I think it just I don't know this is an idea that I'm having uh, and maybe it'll turn into something and maybe it won't but anyway um, that's the it, oh uh, otherwise the only other stuff that I bought I bought some more this is some of the Karen Water Lilies that is called for in different Nora Corbett's or Mirabilia's. So I bought some of those um, for when I want to do those. So that's pretty much what I got. This is um, espresso, hot peppers, tequila sunrise, which those two are for uh, glittering leaves. I think is the name of it. Um, African Violet. Copper. And Slate. It's a real pretty purple gray. So, um, that's pretty much what I've been, I'm getting more of that. The Water Lilies is the, seems to be the 
it seems to be Nora Corbett's favorite when she uses a silk um, or variegated kind of thing. So I've been buying those. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I think, yeah, um, I do, uh, Julie, Kansas City Girl, um, I'm one of those people that really likes it when you talk about books because a lot of times the books that you talk about are ones either that I've read or I want to read and enjoy them when I do. Um, so I hope we get a new book t uh, book talk at some point, um, either as a standalone or as the end of one of your um, floss tubes. Um, but I think I'm in a, that may be something that I want to do, um, talk about some of the books that I read. Um, Maybe like in the end segment type of thing, like what she does, um, and just kind of go over some of the different ones that I've read and what I like about them, if that's something that you would like. Um, I listen to my books most of the time. Most always I'm listening to it. Um, I read a lot at work, and I like having the ability to read or consume literature, but do something else at the same time, like cross-stitch or my uh, chores around the house or whatever. Um, and so that's definitely my preferred way to consume literature these days. Um, but I also love having the actual book. So I have a lot of stuff on my shelf. I may not have physically read that copy, but I have read it. Well, there's a lot of stuff on my shelf I haven't read, but there's a lot of things that I have on my shelf that I have not physically read that copy, but I listened to the book and then I liked it or I liked the series and then I get the books so I can put them on my shelf because I like it. It's like a, I don't know, it's one of the ways that I like to decorate. I mean, maybe I'll show you guys that next time, but I have, so in my house I have, um, it, when I got it, it was, um, I had two living rooms, a formal and a uh, informal living area, and it had just a tiny little breakfast nook for a dining room and no place for to put a big table. Uh, so I turned one of the, I guess it's the informal living room area, um, and turned it into a dining room, added a sh uh, light feature, and then, but I put, I have bookshelves uh, on one of the walls, um, well actually on several walls, uh, but I have bookshelves around and have all of like my board games and stuff in there and then a lot of the books that I really like um, I have out there. And then I have more bookshelves in my office um, room that I have like the overflow or just other stuff that I still really like and I don't want to get rid of, but it's not necessarily, they're not, um, I don't put everything out in the dining room. Um, so like some of my stuff I like broke up. Like I have some of, I have a bunch of Star Wars books from when I was younger. Um, I was really into Star Wars books. Um, the older ones before Disney bought Star Wars and everything. I still really like everything that's going on with, uh, for the most part. Um, I mean, I've got problems with some of what the Disney did, but for the most part I still really like Star Wars even the newer stuff, but it's not something that I have kept up with the books um, the same way that I did when I was younger and reading the expanded universe stuff. So I have like some of my favorite books out there, Star Wars stuff, and then I have the rest of all my books all in chronological order of chronological order of when they happen in the Star Wars timeline. So um, I like books um, and I like fantasy and science fiction is a lot of stuff, some young adult stuff, some um, easy stuff, but anyway. So that's pretty much it, and I think, um, you know, keep having, uh, keep doing what you're doing, and keep up the stitching, and have a good time, and see you next one. Bye!